State of the Union with John King. CNN Sunday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. Bernie Goldberg, welcome. Thanks, Howie. Thanks I agree, for having me. I agree that the Obama campaign coverage was pretty soft, but you go much further than that. You describe the media mindset in your book this way. We need the black guy to win because he's black. Helping to elect our first African-American president would make liberal journalists feel better about the most important people in their lives, right. themselves. So are you saying that uh, journalists for mainstream news organizations deliberately and consciously set out to elect an African-American? I think they were on a historical mission, which is something they had never been on before. In, in the past, liberal reporters put a thumb on the scale for a liberal candidate, whether it was Michael Dukakis or Walter Mondale or John Kerry. This time it was different. This time it was a noble mission that they were on and, and a historical mission. And Barack Obama had a lot of things going for him. He was young, he was cool, not unimportant. He was black and he was liberal, because if we had just inaugurated the first black president who was a, a conservative Republican, there wouldn't have been any slobbering. And, and to sum it up really in a sentence, I think in elite liberal circles, certainly inside the media, race trumps gender, and that's why they, they slobbered over Barack Obama and okay. took Hillary Clinton in the back room and beat her with a rubber hose. Okay, but when you use a word like mission, so what you're saying is that journalists at the big newspapers and big uh, networks, your former <laughs> colleagues at CBS, they're in, in this campaign, they weren't really journalists anymore. They were political activists. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that is what I'm saying. I'm saying they crossed the line from media bias to media activism, and they did it because they thought the cause was worth it. All right, there are generalizations in this book. Here's one. Mainstream media writers hate O'Reilly and think MSNBC is just wonderful. Well, I'm a mainstream media writer. I don't hate Bill O'Reilly. In fact, I was on his radio show last week, right. and I've repeatedly taken on MSNBC for lurching to the left. Right. Uh, obviously, I don't mean every single reporter. Uh, and I don't even mean every single reporter was in the tank for Barack Obama. Uh, I, I'm making a, a statement about the mainstream media as a whole. It doesn't hold up for every single story on every single day. And I certainly, I, I, I certainly didn't mean to give that impression. I don't think I did. I think reasonable right. people will understand that this is a general statement about okay, the media. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I think sometimes you're selective in your evidence. For example, you write about Deborah Howell. She's the former ombudsman at my newspaper, The Washington Post. You say she waited until after the election to write about the tilt on the Post op-ed page toward Barack Obama. But, and, and she did, but on August 3rd, Deborah Howell wrote about the huge imbalance in photos favoring Obama at The Washington Post. On August 17th, she wrote that Obama had a three-to-one advantage over McCain in front-page stories. So she didn't entirely wait until after no, the election. No, no, but this was, this was the, uh, this was the information that would have done us, uh, uh, it didn't do us any good after the election, Howie. Uh, I mean, it was nice that she wrote it. It was nice that she acknowledged what just about everybody out in America already understood, that the media did side with one candidate over another. But why not write it before uh, you know, she wrote some things before, she wrote this after. She okay. shouldn't have written this after, is what I'm saying. Okay. You say that the media during the campaign didn't show enough interest in Obama's re longtime relationship with the unhinged, as you put it, Jeremiah Wright. But as you acknowledge in the book, the, 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 the tapes of those goddamn America sermons were first aired by ABC's Brian Ross, who's a card-carrying member of the uh, mainstream media establishment. And that, that story, it seemed to me, kind of dominated the campaign news for several weeks. It only dominated the campaign after the tapes came out. Mm -hmm. And the tapes came out came way, way, with, way with, late with, in the campaign. The These tapes were available at the so church. These tapes were available. You didn't have to be Woodward or Bernstein to dig them up. You just had to dig into your wallet for a few bucks and buy them. If those tapes had come out six months earlier, certainly a year earlier, I don't think Barack Obama would have been the nominee. I think Hillary Clinton would have been, and I think she would have been the president today. And in that sense, she's the biggest loser in all of this. All right. Well, certainly uh, I would agree that the media should have looked at Reverend uh, Wright earlier in the game.